Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. Today's video is about the installation of Internet Information Services. We will also configure a self-signed certificate so we can have an HTTPS website. And later on, we will configure redirection so that by going to the HTTP website, it will automatically redirect to the HTTPS website, to the secure website. So all of this will be done with a self-signed certificate. It won't necessarily be trusted by the other side. We will work on that in a future video. But for now, let's get started. Uh, so I have a Windows Server 2019 system right here. Uh, this is on the left side of the screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually just install IIS. So if I click through um, until I get to the point where I can select it, I now have the option here. And IIS is listed as web server, web server, and then in parentheses, IIS. So I check that, I say add features. Now I move forward and I don't need to check anything else off here. And then we, it says with web, the web server, you may want to install additional stuff. Here's a list of stuff. Um, some of these things we might look at in future videos, but for now we can go with a standard default installation. We don't need anything else installed. So I will click next and then I can click install. Now this process will take a minute or two, so we'll pause the video and come back. And we're back and uh, as you see, it says installation succeeded successfully. Uh, we can close this and First thing I'm going to do, I could look at the the IIS uh, server manager, the IIS manager on the server side of things, but I'm going to just go to a client. I'm going to go over, this is a Windows 10 client. Um, I will start by just opening up Firefox. And um, once we have Firefox going, I can type in the IP address of the system that is hosting uh, the web server. So. Um, you can see I was testing earlier with a different system. This system is uh, 172.16.12310. And there we go. I am now at a web, I am now at this, this web server that's being hosted here. Now I could also um, put HTTP in there. That's in there by default and that's what it's going to. And if I try putting the secure website, HTTPS colon slash slash, uh, it's going to spin and it's not going to work. So the reason it doesn't work is if we go over here and look at uh, under tools, Internet Information Services Manager, we can also get to it from our start menu and go down to administrative tools and uh, went too far. There it is, Internet Information Services Manager. So. This is, let's get the server manager out of the way so we can be clear what we're seeing. This is Internet Information Services Manager. Um, it has existed for a long time. It's changed over the years, but at this point, this is what it looks like with IIS 10. And if I click on here, this is basically settings that apply to the entire server. If I wanna drill down, I can look at all of the sites on the server and in this case the only site is the default website and these are settings that are related to specifically to the default website so we want to set up https we want a certificate on this website that will allow encryption between the browser and the server so that starts at the server level so we highlight the server and we have server certificates and if i double click on that it lists all the certificates on the server it's a brand new server, we don't have any. I could create a certificate request and that would give me a, um, a file that I could upload to a, a certificate provider and give them some money and then they would give me a certificate that I could complete the request on and basically then load it to uh, apply it to the server. That's the way the real world works. Uh, obviously, I don't want to do, that, to do that in a test environment. I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for something I'm going to use for two minutes. Uh, and we'll see what the self-signed certificate uh, does that is not as good as a, a certificate that, you're, that you pay for. So I'm just going to select create self-signed certificate. Uh, friendly name. It is going to be a test cert. So that's my name right there. And that's it. Self-signed certificate. 
issued to this server issued by this server and it expires uh, a year from today. So now in order to use it, we need to go to our default website and we, we go to bindings over here. These are the ports the, that are uh, the, the bindings to the IP address, site bindings to the website. So right now, HTTP is port 80 and it's listening on all, all IP addresses. That's what we saw when we went over to the client. We saw that we could get to an HTTP website, but not HTTPS. So what I can do is add and the type of site is going to be HTTPS. I'll leave it all unassigned IP addresses, port 443. Uh, we don't want to put a host name in here. All we want to do is say, use that test cert that I created. I could view it, but there you go. That's selected. And now we have that site there. So I'm going to close this. Let me go over here and try to refresh HTTPS 172.16.123.10. And it is giving me an error message. Why is it giving me an error message? Well, it's because it's a self-signed certificate. Fire, well, there are multiple reasons. Um, it's a self-signed certificate, Firefox won't trust that. In addition, and I can select advanced right here, it's saying that the certificate is not valid for 172.16.123.10. The certificate is only valid for that, I, that name that's there. Um, so, I'm going to say I accept that risk because I know I created the certificate. The reason for this is because I could create a, a, a fake banking site that is just slightly different from a real banking site. If I can get someone to go there, I can use a self-signed certificate. This is the warning that, hey, you're not going to the real site that you expect to go to. So I'm going to accept risk and continue. And there we go. I have my website is appearing again and it is using uh, a certificate. Even though it has a, an issue with it, it's not happy about the certificate. That's something, like I said, we'll get to in a future video. So for now, uh, we have an HTTPS website with uh, an IP address. If I wanted to have it as a, um, as a name instead of an IP address, I can do that in my environment because I created a situation where I have DNS here. I'm going to go in and take a quick look at my DNS server. And on the, this Windows 10 client, I actually set the DNS server to be this, this IP address, this server, 123.10. If I go here, I can look at that and just confirm uh, Ethernet, change adapter, there we go. And if I look at properties, the properties of my IPv4 setting 172.16.123.10. That is this system over here, this server. That's where I have DNS installed. Now, I have it installed, but I, had, I don't have anything configured in it. I am going to go back to my DNS configuration, and I want a forward lookup zone. There aren't any, so I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to call it um, uh, primary zone. I'm going to call it... Uh, Andrew.local and now I have my Andrew.local DNS zone. I can go into it and there is um, there is the zone. I'm going to start by creating an A record and I'm going to call that A record uh, name www and the IP address is 172.16.123.10. That's because this is my this is the IP address hosting the web server. The, these things could be on separate systems right now. Uh, in the real world, normally they would be, but in this test environment, it makes it easier to put them all together. So I add that host, and now if I go back to my web browser, I'll open up a new tab and type www.andrew.local, and there we go. And that is on the new server. So I can also do HTTPS colon slash slash, and I will get the error message again. And this time it's gonna say that not valid for andrew.local, it's valid only for EC2 blah, blah, blah. So I can accept risk and continue, and now I'm at this website. So I can get there by IP address or by DNS name. 
Now, this is something we can, again, we can fix this later on. I could create a certificate that is bound to this name and I could trust it by this system. But for now, this is what we're going to look at. So the next step, let's say I had a bank here and I, I did have www.andrew.local, but I didn't want anyone to go to that web page. I only wanted them to go to the secure web page because this is, you know, I just want it to happen automatically. I don't want people to think about it. And if you go to any common web page, you're going to see the same thing. You just type in the, the, the name and it forwards you to the secure website. So how do we do that? Well, with IIS, we can do redirection using uh, a URL rewrite. So this is the program. I'm going to install it. Double click, preparing to install. And we'll see how long this takes. Okay, so the whole process of installing it took uh, maybe two full minutes. I had to click next at one point, that was it. Um, and then I got to the point uh, of the installation finishing. I clicked finish. I shut down the Internet Information Services Manager um, and relaunched it. And now I have URL rewrite. And that is the tool that will allow me to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So if I double click on that now, there's a process I'm going to follow, and um, it's not exactly intuitive, but uh, I'm using directions from SSL.com, how to redirect HTTP to HTTPS with Windows IIS 10, very easy to find. Um, and from that, I'm going to just follow the directions that they give me. So first thing, I have URL rewrite, and I double clicked on that. Now I'm going to select add rules right here. So. These are where the rules are. It's going to be an inbound rule. I'm going to add a rule. And I'm going to start with a blank rule. So blank rule and OK. And now I'm going to give it a name. Now, depending on your screen, it can be very easy to scroll past this, try to enter stuff, and you get to the bottom, and it will, or you get to here, and it won't let you apply the rule. You have to start with a name. So I'm going to give it a name of. Um, redirect and now I can go to matches the pattern regular expressions and in the pattern I need to type parentheses and then a dot a dot an asterisk and close parentheses leave ignore case turned on and scroll down Uh, scroll down to conditions and then I want to select let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger to see a little bit more seeing more of the screen is always helpful so uh, select add and so I select add and under query string I'm going to do braces these are the squiggly and then HTTP and then uh, S and obviously capitalization I was not paying attention to but I can select the one that works for me uh, matches pattern and then pattern I'm going to do the carrot and then off and then ignore case and then I can click OK so there is our condition uh, now we see the condition in the list and now we're gonna go down to action and under action we want redirect, we want HTTP, too many T's, HTTPS, um, and we'll do a brace and HTTP, they do too many, and we'll keep trying to type three T's, underscore host, and then open another brace and request underscore URI, close, and um, I'm going to uncheck append query string and permanent. So now I click apply. Once again, if apply is grayed out, there's a good chance you forgot your name in the first step. And the rules have been changed successfully. Um, so if I want to see what happened, I can go here and explore the website. This is the default website. I go here and explore and I see the web.config file. I can 
Uh, edit that with Notepad++. That's what I have on the system. And I can see the configuration that I just created. And let's, uh, let's see if it works. So I can go here. Um, and if you see, it automatically forwarded. If I go www.andrew.local, it wants to forward to HTTPS. And it's not prompting me because I've already trusted it. So just to show it different, I'm going to go to Internet Explorer. And I don't need any of that. Ask later. Stop. Stop. I don't want to go to that web page. I promise. I want to go to www.andrew.local. And that should resolve. And it says this site is not secure. It I went to andrew.local. It automatically forwarded. It was trying to reach the internet to get a to get to look at the certificate more. But I can say uh, go to the web page and it will trust once I, or it'll display once I get there. Especially when you're not connected to the internet, going to secure websites that you're self-hosting can have delays. And that's because it's trying to verify certificate information, even though it's you know not a trusted certificate. We can, this says there's a certificate error. This says there's a certificate error. And just to be clear, I'll do it one more time, www.andrew.local, and it automatically forwards to um, HTTPS. Or if I do the 172.16.123.10, there we go. No matter what I put in there, if it reaches the HTTP website, it forwards to HTTPS. So if this were everything else were configured properly, this would be a way of ensuring that we get to the secure website. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.